Law Warrior Armor Partisan Heavy Tank Overview One of the most destructive weapons on any battlefield is the strafing or bombing aerospace fighter. To counteract these attacks, many companies produce some type of anti-aircraft system. Two of the most popular are the Rifleman and Jaeger mech battle mechs produced by Calon Industries. These two mechs alone are powerful AA systems because they can each deliver such a large volume of accurate fire. Although Calon no longer had the facilities to produce as many mechs as formerly, they hoped to meet the demand for anti-aircraft systems to replace the damaged or destroyed AA mechs already in use. They filled the gap with the development of the Partisan Heavy Tank. The Partisan uses four long-range autocannon of the same design found on both the Rifleman and Jaeger mech. They provide good firepower with long range, and it's what makes these guns so effective against aircraft. Capabilities The Partisan's anti-aircraft weapons consist of four medium autocannon mounted on a quad turret. Though no different than other guns of the same size, these weapons fire shells, unlike those of other combat weapons. Most similar guns use regular impact explosives, while the Partisan's guns fire proximity-fused rounds. This type of ammunition explodes when it gets within 5 to 10 meters of an airborne target, which gives the whole system better accuracy than a normal gun firing at aircraft. Another difference between the Partisan and other gun carriers is the Anti-Air Flak Systems 1 tracking and targeting equipment. This system can track up to 200 targets at once, determine the range of each, and then fire at the optimum target. The gunner is equipped with a Target ID screen, or TIS, that reads out a list of targets, starting with the closest and ending with the farthest. Using a simple light pen system, the gunner can override the computer's fire orders with his own. The gunner can also remove the TIS from the Partisan and use it up to 20 meters away from the vehicle. The two miniguns are also hooked into the anti-aircraft equipment. Although small and not suitable for anti-aircraft work, these two guns can provide useful extra defensive fire against ground targets. The driver of the Partisan controls the two miniguns, but the gunner has the option of overriding the driver's fire order if he needs the extra firepower. The Partisan's targeting equipment also has an operational fire switch that allows it to fire at ground targets. When engaged with battlefield targets, the gunner always chooses this option and the computer will not switch back to anti-aircraft. As the computer doesn't have an ID system for ground targets as it does flying targets, the gunner must use the system's sights to engage those. When the Partisan is firing at ground targets, the shells of the four guns are automatically disarmed of their proximity fuse, which makes them normal impact rounds. Another feature built into the fire control system is a data link that allows several Partisans to act as one large anti-aircraft unit. All the computers hook into one large net that picks the best possible targets shown on all their radar screens. The computer then fires at either the most threatening target or the most dangerous group of targets. Needless to say, this anti-aircraft defense line can be death to any fighter assault. Battle History A famous Davian battle involving a line of partisans using Datalink occurred on Geltor when a flight of Curita Shillone fighters attacked a group of storehouses. The fighters had been sent as part of a raiding force that was harassing several nearby planets. The Davian units on the other planets were attempting to fight off what looked like major assaults. These attacks were only decoys, however, sent there to lure Davian mechs away from the Galtor storehouses. The Curitan fighters weren't trying to destroy the storehouse, rather they were trying to disable the defending units so infantry could move in and take the warehouse by storm. The only weapons the fighters could use without danger of hitting the warehouse itself were their long and short-range missiles. The only defensive units guarding the storehouses were 10 partisan anti-aircraft vehicles. These vehicles had set up in a prepared emplacement that left only their turrets and miniguns showing. When the Shylons attacked, the partisans were ready. The first attack wave came and went quickly, scoring only rare hits on the partisans. The next attack wave came moments later, but now the fighters were more cautious. They did score several minor hits against the partisan line, but the ground guns destroyed two of the fighters. Though the Cretan commander couldn't afford to lose any more, his orders were to destroy the defending units no matter the cost. He knew that taking out those anti-aircraft guns would require that his fighters hold back none of their own weaponry, and therefore ordered his fighters to attack full force. On the next run, the Partisan unit destroyed over a dozen fighters, while the fighters destroyed only two of the AA guns. The proximity fuse shells of the Partisans continually destroyed the missiles fired by the Shylons, and the heavy emplacements stopped their lasers. 
After two more unsuccessful runs, the Shylon commander retreated with what was left of his flight. No reinforcements were called for, and no other attacks made. Variants There are two popular variants of the Partisan. The first replaces the AC-5s with AC-2s, thus extending the vehicle's range by 180 metres. A second variant replaces the AC-5s with long-range missiles. The latter modification isn't always as effective because its targeting and tracking system has trouble coordinating each missile's trajectory. Notable Vehicles and Crew Larry Vigilante Anti-aircraft gunman Vigilante was the defender of the storehouses on Galtor. Because the partisans were hooked together by data link and set to automatic, AAG Vigilante had little else to do but watch and wait. The only exceptions were the few times the fighter got too close when Larry had to take over one or two of the partisans. Richard Hall Gunner Hall used his partisans' guns as a most effective anti-vehicle system in the Battle for Halstead Station. His tank would account for over five kills of enemy mechs. The Partisan. 80-ton mass, tracked movement type with an internal combustion 240 power plant, speed of 32 crews, 54 flank, with Star Slab 7 armor, equipped with four flak autocannon and two auto guns. Manufactured by Calon Industries, communication systems is the Jolex system, and targeting and tracking is an anti-air flak systems one. So it moves at three and flanks, at, or thanks at five, as it says in the book here, they missed out the L. Um, it's a 240 rated ICE engine, so no worries about fusion there. Uh, it has, let's see, where's its armor? There it is, uh, 22 on the front, 18 on the sides, 16 on the back, and 22 on the turret. For an 80 tonner, not particularly well armed, uh, armored, sorry. It's, it's, so its protection level isn't as good as some of the other heavy tanks that have been in this, uh, 3026 book earlier. But it does have the advantage of that lovely quad AC5 shot. Uh, it's quite nasty. Uh, I mean, no no mech really wants to get in the firing line of this thing. I mean, I know a lot of it talks about, obviously, being a pure anti-aircraft vehicle, but they say that about the rifle and they say that about the Jaeger mech also in this write-up. But, of course, sadly, it's not really the case on the tabletop. Uh, they don't really get that level of... Um, of use as an anti-aircraft vehicle, you're mainly going to stick a partisan in there to mess with the players or to obviously destroy other tanks. The two machine guns are also a nice addition, but they're hull-mounted, so, you know, unless it's only at the front, the machine guns aren't going to be that useful. But yeah, quad AC-5s or quad AC-2s, they're all pretty brutal, good range, decent damage, um, the ability to just plink away for a long time. Ammunition, I'm guessing, is it looks like it's got Right, so it's got 100 rounds of MG, so that's 50 rounds of fire. Ah, there we go. It's got 40 rounds of AC ammo. So, yeah, not, actually, not as much ammo as I would have expected. It means that it would, it would run out of ammo eventually, a lot quicker than I thought it would, but it's still 40 spread between each gun, so it's like 10, 10 rounds for each gun. Uh, 10 rounds of fire isn't bad. But uh, honestly, I, I would probably probably would have found a way to get a bit more ammo in there, just to keep that thing on the field a bit longer. But then, realistically, armoured vehicles would have a logistics uh, vehicle nearby where they can get ammunition, that kind of thing. So I suppose it wouldn't be too big a deal. And these vehicles presumably wouldn't be as frontline as, uh, as a lot of scenarios would uh, put them on tabletop, you know, these things would be defending a base or, you know, an important location uh, to uh, to cover from uh, any air assault. So there is that. Uh, it's a cool looking vehicle as well. Uh, it's it's simple, but uh, yeah, very dis very distinct with the artwork. Uh, I do quite like that. But uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Shrek, uh, sorry, is up next. Partisan is the, uh, is, is the one we're doing here. I'm sorry, the Shrek, I was scrolling through and the Shrek was the next one that came up, so... Ooh, spoilers. Nice one, uh, nice link here. I didn't actually notice at the time recording it, but uh, yeah, Galtor, mentioned again. Hey, more info for Galtor. Great book. Um, if you haven't uh, listened to the series, there's a Low Warrior campaign that I finished uh, recently of uh, of the Galtor campaign. So yeah, if you want to hear about, in my opinion, one of the uh, best uh, source books that were ever produced by FASA uh, back in the day. Had great information, great battle, uh, really interesting uh, sort of Really interesting book, well put together. Wish they'd done more like it. Um, check it out, Galtor campaign. 
uh, should be in my playlist there, and if I remember, which I probably won't, uh, I will try and remember to link the playlist at, uh, at the bottom of this one. But until then, have a good one, and uh, thanks for listening, listening as always, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.